Hey y'all. Uh, the only thing about using the sh share screen in Facebook is that it will not let me share my view um, of my person. So I can't like do a prayer at the end or anything, but I can let you see the writing in the book. And I think it's a lot more interesting if I'm gonna read out the book for y'all to actually see the writing in the book. Um, y'all let me know if that is an interest to you or not. Um, of course, we could expand on it, but I do want to mention one thing to you, and that is my brother called me yesterday because I talked to him a little about, about, I'll talk to him a little bit about speaking in tongues, and he and I was discussing it because Chris is not home to discuss it with, and I know I had told y'all that I didn't believe in it, but according to my brother, and I am going to study it, the tongues that came down at, at Pentecost were actually tongues of different languages. But according to Eddie, when Paul lists the gifts that we receive for the Holy Spirit when we are saved, there are gifts. And one of the gifts is speaking in tongues and interpretation. So I have got to really study that before I can come on here and give a personal opinion on tongues, okay? So I just thought I would run that by you he says it's in, I believe he said 1 Corinthians. I haven't gotten a chance to read about it and study it yet, um, but I'm going to, and then we will do a session just on that, maybe one day next week. So if you want to look into it to see what you can find in the Word of God, that would be great, and that way we can look at it together when I do decide to review it, okay? Um, now, I do know that there are some people that believe that you're not saved or you don't have the Holy Spirit unless you have spoken in tongues, and I do not believe that that could be true at all. Um, so we'll just have to look and see what the Bible says instead of what he says or she says. Let's go into the Word of God and see what the Bible says, okay? So we will do that, and I will do an extensive study on it. I will do, I'll look at commentary. I will look in the word of God. It, then we will come back and we will discuss it. We'll try, how, how about let's try to make that on Wednesday next week so that you will know for sure when I'll be back to talk about that subject. So on Wednesday of next week, we will do that. Okay. Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And again, once again, I'm having a hard time uh, getting a new program to work. Um, I can always get stuff on the screen, but I can't seem to get both me and the uh, text. So I'm just sharing this through Facebook. Um, we're, we're on today, Chapter 23, The Doctrine of Christ. And um, um, it starts out by letting us know that People have a hard time believing that Jesus is the Son of God. They either believe he's a great teacher or they believe he's the Son of God. Or they just don't believe he ever existed. And so um, one thing that he tells us here is that, um, I hope y'all can hear me this time. But one thing he tells us here is that he agrees with C.S. Lewis because C.S. Lewis, right here it is, by C.S. Lewis, who wrote in his book, Mere Christianity. And I, we're going to read this together. It says, that is the thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level of a man who says he is a poached egg or else he would be the devil of hell. He says, you must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else he was a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. Um, he has not left that open to us, and he did not intend to. So um, he lets us know that those, those people that think, he, that think he was a great teacher uh, are really out of their minds because he wasn't a great teacher. He was, he was God. He said he was God. 
And if he wasn't God, then he wasn't a great teacher because that would have made him a lunatic. Um, and so that's what he tries to say in this book. Um, so we are going to uh, go to the next section now, and we're going to see the major subdivisions of Christ are deity, humanity, resurrection, and return. So on the deity side, it says Jesus of Nazareth was God incarnate. It says, though he was a man, he was also God. The second member of the Trinity existed before he was born as Jesus of Nazareth. It says Christ was active in the creation of the world and during the Old Testament when the timing was right. The Christ, the second person of the t Trinity, became incarnate as Jesus of Nazareth, but did not forfeit his divinity at any time. And y'all know this is one of my very favorite verses, and that is, and this shows that he was there during creation, okay? It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Anyway, that's one of my favorite verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, sorry, I, I changed the pages. The next subdivision <clears throat> and the symbol is Jesus right here. Um, the symbol of the deity or the, is the Trinity symbol, okay? So now we have the symbol of Jesus for humanity. Christ was a man. He was Jesus of Nazareth. And then it says, though Jesus was God, he was also a man. He took on the form of humanity, and although he did not sin, he tasted all other human experiences, including hunger, fatigue and sorrow, etc. He was born supernaturally, conceived, was born of a virgin, and lived an apparently normal early life as a carpenter's son. As a man, he was crucified, died, and was buried. Now, the central passage for this, and this is a re another really good verse. So we have, in the beginning was the Word, and we know that Jesus is the Word. The Word's all about Jesus, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. And then we go to the next one. And this is, this is a great one too. And it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the father, full of grace and truth. All right. So that just shows us that he was a man. Okay. Because it says plainly that he was there in the beginning when the world was created that's his deity. Then it says plainly that he, he became flesh, okay, which made him a man. And there's the symbol for the man right there. Now we have the resurrection, okay? So it says after being killed, Jesus was raised to life again. And it says after being falsely accused and tried in a series of kangaroo courts, Jesus was subjected to a form of capital punishment reserved for non-Roman citizens. He was flogged, a savage punishment which killed 60% of its victims. Then he was nailed to a wooden cross where he died. Afterwards, he was wrapped in a burial cloth, placed in a sealed tomb where he remained for three days. And at the end of that time, a miraculous earthquake moved the stone from the mouth of the tomb to reveal the Jesus was raised from the dead. After just three days, just as he had said, he would be. Now it says, here's the passage that backs up the resurrection. Who was declared the son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. According to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's out of Romans 1, 4. So now we have the return, where Jesus returns, and this is the symbol for his return. So he's in all three of these symbols, but you just have to figure out which one, you know, looks like, let's see, you have to kind of just figure them out. Like this is the Trinity, that one's easy. Humanity, he's holding his arm out. So just think of little children come to me, okay? And then this one is the resurrection where his arms are up to heaven and it has he looks like kind of he's in a cloud and then the return 
is his ascension, I guess, not ascension, but when he comes down from heaven, descension. Um, so let's talk about what they say here. It says, after being killed, Jesus was raised to life again, okay? After being falsely accused and tried in the series, oh, I already read that one, I'm sorry. The return, I'll get there in a minute, y'all. Jesus will return to the earth at some time in the future. The picture of the Messiah in the Old Testament was an uncertain one. Some of the prophetic passages spoke of a humble servant Messiah, while others spoke of a glorious and powerful king. So stark was the contrast between the two kinds of passages that some Old Testament scholars thought there would be two messiahs. With the additional revelation in the New Testament, we know how to reconcile these passages. He came the first time as an humble servant and died for the sins of mankind. And after he was resurrected, he ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. Someday in the future, and according to biblical prophecy, it could be soon, Jesus will return to earth as a powerful and glorious king to institute righteousness on the earth. The passage for this is looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That comes out of Titus 2.13. So we have the doctrine of Christ, which is deity, humanity, resurrection, and return. So you have Jesus of Nazareth was God incarnate with the deity. You have your central passage listed, and then each of these are spelled out with a, and their central passage is listed. And then he goes on um, and gives you a self-test at the end, okay? And then tomorrow we will go through the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed, blessed day. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman. And thanks for going along with our Bible study. It's a wonderful Bible study. and We've learned a lot, haven't we? Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for everyone that's come on here today. And each and every one that will watch later, we pray that you will bless us as we go throughout our day. Help us keep from temptation. Um, help us be adults and um, help us shine our lights and be motivated today and not be depressed. Help us see that you give us blessings each and every day and help us dwell on those blessings and the future and not the past. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Bye, y'all. Love you. Thanks for watching.